Jadav, inform others also to join the class immediately. So already it is 9-1. <coughs> I'll wait for another two minutes. You and Shashank Kauda has joined. I'll wait for another minute, then we'll start. Who is the third person joined? Is it Humbarwadi? Is it Humbarwadi? You can put a message in WhatsApp. I can see those things. Okay. I will just wait a last one minute, then I will mark them as an absent. In case if they won't join. Yada, how many are there? Okay. Now it's nine five. I will start. D E S. Yes. So basically this is a symmetry key algorithm okay which is known as data encryption standard which is known as data encryption standard DES stands for data encryption standard okay basically this particular algorithm is of the kind block cipher is of the kind a block cipher category algorithm okay so as i told you there are two categories of algorithm one is block block cipher second is stream stream cipher okay so there are these two categories of algorithms are there so the ds falls under the category of block block cipher category so what exactly this block cipher means so already we have seen these techniques okay what happens in a Vigala cipher what happens in a hill cipher yes just recall those things 
hill cipher beginner cipher even for that matter caesar cipher okay what we do is the given message got divided into a blocks we are talking of dividing a message into a blocks of smaller checks okay so we are dividing this message into a small blocks of small checks manageable checks okay then we operate with the key on this message to generate a cipher text to generate a cipher text this is what we are doing in a say block cipher category okay this is what we did you know the other three examples okay so you see uh, when it when we start with this okay so in hill cipher you see i talk of taking a key of size some matrix form keys in the form of matrix that is of the type m by m yes so and in wigner cipher i was telling you to take a uh, some size uh, some block of uh, uh, so the certain larger key or with of some say bits into it so that is the block size which will going to decide the how much size the message should be or how much size the message block should be okay so we are talking of using a block key here rather than talking a say using a single key and whereas in caesar cipher you see it is also a kind of a block cipher where the block size is one where the block size involves one there is there will be only one character in every block okay caesar cipher is also a kind of a block cipher category so like this these are the algorithms they are say basic algorithm basic techniques okay which has their own say flaws into it okay even though we talk of say using the hill cipher where matrix is involved okay but still it is possible to decode or we even hacker uh, say attacker can attack say when something is encrypted using a hill cipher block cipher uh, i mean beginner cipher or caesar cipher caesar cipher is very easy to say decode but even for that matter hill and beginner can be very easily attackable that already we have discussed now when it comes to a des now we will not going to deal in terms of characters here we will going to deal in terms of bits okay so whereas in des algorithm data encryption standard algorithm okay so your message now see i will start talking in terms of bits huh? so your message which is represented in the form of zeros and ones okay which gets divided into a blocks of 64 bits yes so your message gets divided into a blocks of 64 bits every block contains 64 bit every block contain a 64 bit in this category okay so these 64 bit will going to be operated by a key okay normally in beginner cipher and all okay we talk of using a key which will going to operate on the block of a message okay block of small chunk of the message okay same key, same way here too we are operating on the 64 bit blocks with the help of key okay so the key size in this case is of 56 bits 56 bits okay using this 56 bits we are deriving 48 bits which will going to operate on this 64 bit very interesting you see i am talking about 64 48 bit key which has to operate on 64 bit what way they will op operate that we will go to discuss okay so this 48 bits will go to operate on this key yes and the, it generates a cipher text after 16 similar rounds okay that will keep it in mind so 16 times this operation get carried out on each block we are operating 16 times this kind of operation we are performing on each block so every time the outcome that we what we are getting is 64 bits after every round the out outcome what we are getting is 64 bits say and these 64 bits again they get operated with a newer key of 48 bits so like this we are performing this operation 16 times okay how many times 16 times you are operating on this block 
with a 48 bit key okay 16 times so before going into this stage okay before going to at this particular stage of say encryption so this is the process of encryption that is involved in a ds so before entering into a this state of encryption in ds say there will be a first initial permutation initial permutation stage okay initial permutation stage okay after this initial permutation so you are dividing the message into 64 uh, bits and that undergoes the permutation stage after permutation we start operating on those 64 bits with the help of key and 16 times we operate on those blocks okay every time new block gets generated on that you are uh, say again you are performing the key operation on it like this you are performing 16 times after 16 times okay so then there will be a last stage which we call it as final permutation okay in between there will be a 16 key rounds okay so like this we have say three stages okay Huh, uh, before going for this final uh, say permutation there will be one more thing that swapping stage okay so swapping stage just swapping happens right and left swapping happens then it will go to a final permutation then the outcome is your ciphertext okay so like this we have a four stages or four rounds uh, four set of operations that are involved in DS. Okay. The major part of this DS is this 16 rounds, 16 round key operations. Okay. So initial permutation, final permutation, swapping. Okay. They are not that important when it comes to a ciphertext from the point of view of ciphertext. Okay. So all the security will going to be provided by this key round. The required say to make it the ciphertext to be more secured. Okay, this 16 key round will be say is helping us to make ciphertext more robust. Okay, so but the thing is that actually this 64 bit length and that 48 bit key size itself is a major issue over here. Okay, so initially in 90s and all, okay, it was a kind of a say methodology that was used for encryption and all it was a very popular say technique but later on people realized it is very easily crackable okay because of as i said the modern computing facilities and all okay say help us to crack this algorithm faster okay so because of that nowadays this ds is not that widely used okay whereas ds is replaced by the public key algorithm that is your say RSA algorithm okay whereas DS is of the category of secret key okay As at the beginning I said it is a category of secret key algorithm where the receiver also should know what keys we are using at different rounds okay and then only it is possible for the receiver to decode the message so the key what is used on a sending side is required to be known by the receiver to work with this DS so that is the reason we call it as a secret key algorithm or symmetric key algorithm okay key used on sending side and the receiving side will remain same okay now how exactly the things happen in say those 16 key rounds okay so where in 16 key rounds you have 64 bit block see listen to this it is very uh, uh, very important from the point of view of examination okay so we are talking of dividing this 64 bit into two blocks okay so it gets divided into a two halls so first the left side 32 bit we call it as say li minus 1 that is left 32 bits and right side we call it as ri minus 1 we call it as ri minus 1 this is 32 bits this is 32 bit together it is 64 bit so this is what is we are doing in a every key round that you keep it in the mind okay so the given 64 bit first 
it gets divided into a blocks of sub blocks of 32 bits sub blocks of 32 bit okay then what we do is say directly without doing any changes to this ri okay without doing any changes to this ri so we'll shift it to a left side you see i'm going to call it as li so purposely i have taken it as a li minus one ri minus one so that i can use li over here okay so in the next stage it will be li okay so this ri directly gets shifted to li okay i hope it is clear so that means this ri is of 32 bits the same 32 bits will going to be say called as li now when it comes to say ri minus 1 okay what exactly happens here is we will go to use some function some function which gets operated by key which gets operated by key so this key i am going to call it as ki so the key of i throughout key of i throughout okay so as i said there are 16 such similar rounds so every round will go to have a different key the same key will not go to be used so at every round you are talking of using a different key so this is your i round key so which is of the size 48 bits but when you talk about the key space actual key size is of 56 bits so that means you are deriving 48 bits out of this 56 bits okay you are deriving say 48 bits out of 56 bits so that means you have say 2 raised to 56 different combinations of keys yes out of that okay you are selecting the key of size 2 raised to uh, is of 48 bits so that means you are talking of mapping this 2 raised to 56 to 2 raised to 48 values okay now you are talking of selecting a key of 48 bits yes so this gets operated with ri minus 1 which is of 32 bit size which is of 32 bit size okay which is of 32 bit size okay so then the outcome of this function is get xor okay is get xor okay with li minus 1 with li minus 1 okay now see what is happening the same li minus 1 32 bit is get xor with the outcome of this function which is again a 32 bit which is again a 32 bit okay so that means actually 48 bit key is get operated on 32 bit value yes so again the outcome of this operation is 32 bits outcome of this function function block is 32 bit what is that function i will tell you okay so the out outcome is again it is 32 bits okay it is 32 bit and this will be your ri this will be your ri which is of 32 bit now see again you are recreating the block which is of the size 64 bit after performing all these operations you are recreating the block of size 32 bit so this is how you are performing the operation on 64 bit block i hope it is clear i hope it is clear yes prathamesh okay so that means you are performing such 32 rounds say when it comes to answering by you you just whatsapp me a message yes or no something of that sort because my whatsapp is on over here so i can go through it okay so i can at least if you had any doubt you are free to put message or otherwise i am going to give you a time so there will be a, some interaction time so during that time you are free to raise issues okay so this is how we are performing so the equations that whole operations i write over here so li is equal to what it is ri minus 1 but whereas in case of ri ri is what so li li minus 1 
L i minus 1 is getting XOR with okay just recall that what I have shown uh, what I have shown you in the figure so it gets XOR with say outcome of this function which is generating a 32 bit value so the inputs to this function is key and your ri minus 1 okay inputs to this function is your key and ri minus 1 key of i round and ri minus 1 okay so these two will going to give you the values the final values that is ri and li so these are the equations that what we are representing for every round so these are the operations that are happening at every round okay so like this we are performing operation 16 time okay every time your i gets increased increased the basically the same methodology that is used say mainly because to simplify the hardware design to simplify the hardware design because there is a iterative say kind of a say thing that is happening over here this helps us to simplify the hardware uh, implementation of this DES okay so basically for that reason they had gone for say the sim similar 16 rounds okay but when it comes to say decryption operation okay so rather than drawing it so I'll just write it in the form of equation so decryption what we are expecting we are expecting say exactly it is reverse operation of that so it is ri minus 1 and li minus 1 these are the things that what we want in the decryption side whatever we have done say in the one particular direction the similar action will going to take place at a receiving side but in the opposite direction so that will lead to a decryption operation okay so when it comes to a decryption the operation which will be shown like this k ri minus 1 will be nothing but your li so the previous stage li will be directly transferred to the say whatever the action that what we have done here say li minus 1 ri minus 1 which was undergoing through uh, some function yes so this function is probed with key this is xor operation so this op this comes as it is now see when it comes to ri minus 1 so ri minus 1 you see so it is nothing but your li itself has to go back to ri minus 1 so the same thing I am representing over here. So when it comes to encryption, your ri minus 1 is becoming a li. But when it comes to decryption, it has to happen in the reverse direction. So that means it has to go back to a ri minus 1 position. So your li will go to become ri minus 1. But whereas li minus 1, see, li minus 1, okay, it has to happen in a reverse direction. That is nothing but, okay, it is your ri. Okay, the same ri will going to be uh, inputted as an xor. Okay, so it gets xor with, it gets xor with, okay, function of, function of li, function of li, okay, and kr. So these are the two inputs for this function in the reverse direction to get li minus 1. Okay, so this is how the decryption happens. Now see, again the same actions that what we have performed in the encryption time. So, but only the input which will going to get changed is Li. So, during encryption time, it is Ri, Ri minus 1. But during decryption time, it is Li. Okay, so this is what is the change that happens during the decryption time. These are the equation for decryption. Okay, so this is how we are performing encryption and decryption in a DES. Okay. Now, the question arises. Okay. Now, the question arises. What is that function f? What is that function f? We call that function we call that function as round function. We call that function as round function. Okay, what exactly happens in this round function? Basically, there are four operations involved this, in this round function. First one is expansion. First is expansion. The second stage is 
the second say operation in this round function is say the function when i say it is performing four different operations in this function in this order okay first it performs the expansion second it function uh, performs xor operation with round key now see this thing why we need this expansion why we need uh, say anyway this is an operation that will go to happen with the round key okay next is third one is substitution yes next is substitution and last one is permutation the last stage is permutation okay now when it comes to a expansion stage what why we need this expansion okay basically in this expansion stage okay so we are converting okay we are converting say with the help of uh, some kind of a expansion function we are increasing this 32 bit to a 48 bits i am not going to details of this expansion part okay we are talking of using some say technique with the help of which we are expanding this by this 32 bit by 48 bits just by adding few bits to make it a 48 bits okay uh, in some particular fashion I, uh, we substitute some bits to it to make it as of a length of 48 bits okay so again it is known operation for, for the receiver also okay so there will be a some using some specific method okay we add additional bits to make it as a 48 bits then when it comes to a round key okay when it comes to a round key it is a simple thing like now see your 32 bit ri minus 1 gets expanded to 48 bits so now ri minus 1 gets XOR with your key which is of 48 bits now these two are 48 bits okay you already it is expanded to 48 bits and now this is also 48 bits so the XOR operation will not go to cause any problem okay so the outcome of this will go to be 48 bits outcome of this is 48 bits okay so now these 48 bits okay in a substitution stage what will happen you see just i will rub this over here so that i can write the remaining part of it so now what happens in the substitution stage is that we will go to have some kind of a s box over here okay s box we call it as a s box okay which requires six bit input which needs six bit inputs okay these six bits are say i0 i1 i2 i3 i4 and i5 the outcome of this s box outcome of this x box is four bits okay outcome of this s box is four bits okay s box means substitution box s box means a substitution box so outcome of this is you are four bits now see this is what is a x box that is implemented in a des now all of a sudden i have jumped from 48 bits to six bits what exactly it means so it is that your 48 bit output of second stage that xor stage okay get divided into a eight such say sub blocks eight such sub blocks six into eight is 48 so that means every eight block all these eight blocks will go to have a six bit inputs so that means this 48 bits gets divided into a eight sub blocks eight sub blocks so every sub blocks will go to have a four bit input okay those four bits are nothing but from this 48 bits okay i'm not changing any order or so so as it is so from msb to lsb or from lsb to msb we move okay so select the first six bit apply to first s1 box next six bits next s1 box next six bits next s1 box and so on okay so there will be a six uh, i mean there will be a eight such six bit uh, s box to which you are applying a 
six bit inputs to which you are applying a six bit inputs okay so outcome of them is nothing but say it is a four bit now what what exactly we will get after performing the operation on all eight blocks okay after performing a operation on all say eight blocks i am starting from s0 so i'll go up to s7 that means uh, i have say eight such s blocks okay all these x blocks are giving four bit output so if all of them are giving a four bit output how many s box there are eight x boxes what is the output of each s box it is four bits so but when i multiply these all so the outcome what i'm going to get is 32 bit output so collectively we are taking this 32 bit as a output of this s box so in the substitution stage again you are bringing back the value to a 32 bit okay so now how exactly this s box is implemented okay actually this s box is nothing but it is a kind of array it's a kind of array okay which will go to have say uh, there are four rows into it okay there are four rows into it okay so there are four rows into this array 1 2 3 4 so these are the four rows and 16 columns 16 columns if i start from 0 it goes up to 15 so that means there are 16 columns and four rows so this will be zero row this will be first second and third so your x box will be implemented as an array of or matrix of say this size okay there are four rows and 15 columns okay four rows and 15 columns i am not going to draw all 15 just for understanding reason okay so now say you are say few bits i mean four bits of those s box you see we have a six bits over here yes i0 to i5 i0 to i5 okay so what we do is say i will use the four bits actually what exactly implemented in the ds is they take i1 i2 i3 i4 to identify one of the column these are the things which will be used as a used to identify the index of the column so there are 16 columns so four bits are enough to identify a specific column so depending on the combination of these bits what combinations they have so that will select a specific column say if it is 0001 okay so uh, i mean i'll take like this so i will write this i4 i3 i2 i1 so normally we express the bit in this way so if it is 0010 so that means we are talking of selecting a second column we are talking of selecting a second column okay now see the bits used are i1 i2 i3 and i4 okay to identify the column they will be used as say index to a column next the remaining two bits that is your i0 and i5 look at the thing the first bit and last bit lsp and msp bits they will be used to identify these rows okay there are only four rows two bits are enough to identify specific row 0 0 will indicate 0 row. yes so i write it like this i5 to i5 uh, 0 0 it will identify first row 1 0 it is for uh, second row 1 0 it is third row 1 1 it is fourth row okay 0 0 is first 0 1 is second row 1 0 is third row 1 1 is fourth row so these remaining two bits will go to act as an indices to a row okay now with the help of these bits say for example so i have taken 
this i1 as 0, i2 as 1, i3 as 0, i4 as 0. So that means it is identifying the first column and row will go to be identified by this i0 and i5. Okay. So I take it as 1, 1. I take it as 1, 1. So that means this box of or the value which is stored at this particular place of this matrix will be picked. All these values are of 4 bit slot. All these values are which are dumped over here, they are of 4 bit size. They are of 4 bit size. So, with the help of these numbers, you are talking of selecting a value from specific box of this matrix. Okay, specific value of this matrix will go to be selected with the help of these 6 bits. So, this is the methodology that is used to identify a specific blocks in the matrix. So, it is uh, entirely depends on what values of these bits they bear. Okay, so then value will be picked. So that value will go to be the outcome of this S box. Now actually there is no any kind of operation is happening in this S box. Okay, S box is implemented in this way in an actual DES that you keep it in your mind. Now the question is how we have arrived to this table and how exactly these values are filled into this table. This is a bit a mystery thing in a DES. No one knows how they arrived to these values. This is what is the major drawback of DS. They have not revealed way in which the, out, the values are put into this matrix. So this is what is the problem with the DS algorithm. Okay. So how exactly these values are dumped over here? Normally, you should know the procedure. Then only you can make the algorithm more secure. Okay. If you don't know the procedure, how these values are coming over here. Okay. So then it loses its security. Okay. So maybe you are hiding the information how you are calculating and all, but if it is not public, way in which you are performing the calculations, way in which we are, what kind of algorithm you, you are using to perform or to obtain these values, if it is not public, okay, then it will not be secured. This is what is the rule. Christoph's rule says that the things what you are performing, it has to be a public, okay. So then only you can make the things secured, okay. So here you are trying to hide the thing, okay, actually. Uh, in DS, they don't know how exactly the values that are there in this table is created. Okay, so these four bits will go to be the outcome of substitution. Okay, so this is the outcome of substitution. Such eight S boxes are there. All eight will go to produce the four bits. So the outcome of this substitution is substitution stage is 32 bit. Then these 32 bits will go to be shuffled. That is permutation stage, okay, where they will be shuffled in some particular order. So that is nothing but a permutation stage, okay. So this is how the action that ha happens in the, you know, say, uh, that round in uh, in a round function. In every round function, these four operations take place, okay. In every round function, those expansion, XOR, substitution permutation all those things happen in every round function okay so this is how the round function functions okay so i just told you the explanation of this block f block which is performing some operation with ri minus 1 and key so what all that happens in this f block okay that i have explained those four things that what we discussed that all four things happens over here then outcome is 32 bit this 32 bit in turn get XOR with say which value that is li minus 1 then outcome is your ri outcome is your ri this is what happens in the say your round function i mean uh, in every round of ds okay so these rounds okay these rounds Basically, it is a kind of a iterative one. Okay. Basically, when it comes to designing of hardware chip, okay, so it will help them to say reduce the cost of that chip. Okay, that is the reason why they have gone for the 16 similar rounds. 16 similar similar round. And they also call this as a fiestal structure. Okay. So this complete operation, what I have explained, okay. So that is nothing but your 
fiestal, fiestal structure. So this is Li, this is Ri, this is Li minus 1. So these operations, whatever this operation which is represented here, that we call it as fiestal structure. Okay, that we call it as fiestal structure. I hope it is clear here. Yeah. So in examination and all, okay, uh, this uh, most of the time the question is asked, explain that fiestal structure. Okay, so that means you need to explain this. Or sometimes the question, most uh, say uh, expected question in question number two, okay, of your question paper is on DS, explain DS. Okay, most of the time the question, you see the question papers, most of the time that question 2 is nothing but it is explain DS. Okay, sometimes they insist you to explain fiestal structure, which is nothing but again explanation of DS only, but those 16 rounds, what is happening in those 16 rounds that you are explaining. Okay. One one more has left. Who is that? Pratamesh. Who is left? See, you people only insisted to take this class and many of them are not appearing for the class. Already they faced a disaster. Hello sir, one Nimish. I mean, no, I'll phone none today. I mean, I'll call you. I'll Nimish. Okay. I hope it is clear to you all. Say something. Either you put a message in WhatsApp. Is there any issues with this explanation? Or I think. If you had any doubt or so, you are free to put that doubt either in a WhatsApp or otherwise there will be one interaction session during that time you are say allowed to discuss these issues. Okay. And next, we will talk regarding say different modes of DES. We talk regarding different modes of DES operation. Okay. What are these, those different modes of DS operations? Basically, this was the thing that what I explained here, okay, which is meant for say working on DS. So this DS is used in a, some different flavors, okay, that we call it as a modes of operations, okay. So this first mode is simple mode, okay, that is ECB mode, electronic code book mode. E means electronic, C means code, B means say book, electronic code book mode. Okay, so what exactly this means? Very simple. Okay, so in this case, uh, basically what we do is we are talking of say using a plain text P1 which is say passing through say some uh, sorry uh, ECB block which gets operated with key the outcome is hypertext outcome is hypertext since I used a P1 I am using a letter P2 so all your plain text performs undergoes this electro, electro ECB block and it generates a hypertext okay this is very simple thing okay but the major drawback of this ECB mode is say if I talk of say identical blocks of plain text okay the same P1 if it comes in the next stage the cipher text which is getting generated out of this E box will going to remain same here there is no difference okay say for example if you are talking of say having a length of your plain text is uh, divided into 96 blocks, 96 sub blocks. Okay, your plain text message, complete message got divided into 96 blocks. 
सो नाइंटी सिक्स ब्लॉक्स यू हैव डिवाइडेड योर प्लेन टेक्स्ट एंड से फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यूर पी वन ब्लॉक एंड से पी नाइंटी एथ ब्लॉक इफ बोथ ऑफ देम दे आर सेम द मैसेज दैट इज पी वन ब्लॉक कंटेन्स एंड द मैसेज दैट इज पी नाइंटी एथ ब्लॉक कंटेन्स इफ इट इज सेम और पार्ट ऑफ द मैसेज दैट पी वन ब्लॉक पी वन ब्लॉक कंटेन्स एंड पी नाइंटी एथ ब्लॉक कंटेन्स इफ इट इज सेम से फॉर एग्जाम्पल हाई इट इज ऑल्सो हाई इट इज ऑल्सो हाई इट इज नॉट एक्चुअली से हाई जस्ट फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग रीजन आई एम राइटिंग द वैल्यू दैट इज इन द पी ब्लॉक इज हाई वैल्यू दैट इज देर इन द पी नाइंटी एथ ब्लॉक इज हाई फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग रीजन आई एम टेकिंग सम मैसेज स्ट्रिंग यस बट एक्चुअली यू आर परफॉर्मिंग का ऑपरेशन ऑन बिट्स सो आर अदरवाइज यू टेक अ बिट्स ओनली इट इज बेटर से जीरो 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 यस हियर इट इज जीरो 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 Yes, whatever the outcome we are getting when it passes through this E E block or ECB block. Okay, so say if it is outcome is all zeros and last bit is one, the same outcome we will going to get similar bit bits which are there at the ninetieth block should not happen. This is what is the major drawback with this particular thing. Yes, whatever the outcome you are getting. in the first block same outcome you are getting if the same input is applied okay this is what is the major drawback of this ecb mode okay if somebody knows if somebody has an idea about what is there in the 90th block what is there in the 90th block by using the cipher text of the 90th block he may compare with other blocks and he may decode the message he may come to know regarding the message okay so this is the possibility in ecb mode so now to ele eliminate this particular drawback okay so they talk of going for cbc chain uh, cbc mode okay they go for cbc mode they do a slight change over here so some slight modification they have done to this thing so they start with a p1 block which gets xor with initialization vector which will be say uh, some random value okay so then we are talking of making it to pass through your e block this p1 now directly p1 is not applied as it is over here it gets xor with initialization vector so what is the value of initialization vector it is randomly selected the random function is also known to the receiver that you keep it in the mind so the outcome is c1 the outcome is c1 okay but when it comes to the second stage when it comes to the second stage p2 we are not using the same initialization vector the outcome of this will going to be used as input to this xor yes and this will be creating a cipher text c2 now you eliminate the problem what you have noticed in ecb mode okay so this cb we call it as cbc mode cipher block chain okay cipher block chain yes so this is cbc mode i hope it is clear any doubt regarding this so like this you continue with every block yes i uh, every block will also going to be operated with the key ha huh? that you keep in mind so it is c so k1 k2 k3 the keys are different yes so like this your cbc mode works okay cipher block chaining mode yes and decryption when it comes to cipher block chaining mode okay again more or less similar action okay more or less similar action there will be a decryption box yes to which the same key is used so your cipher text will going to be an input to it and the outcome this is the block huh? decryption box 
he indicates the encryption box. So it gets operated with initialization vector and then the outcome is plain text. By applying C1 you are getting the say uh, P1. One thing you keep it in mind for the next stage D2 what will happen is you need to XOR with something that is P2 the, it is also get operated with a key the input is C2 but it gets XOR with C1 just a reverse operation of that so there we were C1 itself was XOR with P1 so here the C1 is X, getting XOR with the outcome of this and then it is generating the P2 so the reverse action of it it will lead to a P2 this is what is decryption in case of CBC mode decryption in case of CBC mode Okay, so next is say cipher feedback mode, CFB mode. Okay, this is one more mode where it is slightly different from these things. We will talk of using the shift register here. We will talk of using a kind of a shift register. Yes, whose size is B, B bit shift register. Okay, so out of this B bit, we are talking of selecting S bits, which is smaller than B. Okay, so we are talking of using the S bits of it. Okay, so one thing you keep it in the mind. So this complete B bit, it gets encrypted with say some encryption blocks. Okay, along with key. Okay, so this is B bit. One thing you keep it in mind. Sorry, I have said S here. But actually complete all complete okay so this complete size will go to be XOR with P1 it will go to be XOR with say your plain text P1 okay so then the outcome generated is C1 and this outcome so the output of this is also act as a feedback So moment this operation happens, so you need to push these S bits inside. So for that you are eliminating the S bits which are XOR over here. Okay, so you are say shifting it left side so that to take these S bits inside and MSP emits S bits will go to be discarded. Okay, so like this in CFP mode. Okay, cipher feedback mode. The things happen okay so these are the three different modes yes and uh, actually there is some ambiguity here in the question paper I mean in the syllabus so they said DS okay discuss DS so out of that okay actually CFB and all are say part of DS part of DS but say when you look at the syllabus okay there they only mentioned regarding DS and fiestal structure okay tomorrow to make you more safe I also explained you regarding the different modes okay I hope it is clear to you if you had any doubt and all you are free to ask there are still five more minutes you are free to ask your doubts So this completes your module 1, this completes your module 1 and in the next class we will discuss regarding RSA algorithm which is part of module 2. So now you are ready for two questions, your two questions are completed. I hope you don't have any doubts. I will end the session. Free to ask.